I don't know, but... Now, you know what you need, Chantal? You need to get your butt out of the Middle East. You need to go back to Canada, and you need to start living a life that isn't just a big scam. I mean, this is silly. You're going to be 40 years old. You're out here, I mean, following some 29-year-old thinking that he's going to love you and marry you and make a life with you and whatever. Girl, come on. He laughs at you. He makes fun of you. I I mean, why do you think you're over there with him? Because you guys are living it up? I mean, yeah, you really look like you're living it up. You really look like you're happy. What you need to do is you need to go back to Canada. You need to start putting in hard work. And you need to, if a relationship is really what you want, if that's your end game in life, I know it is for some people. If that's really what you want, someone to love you, someone to call you baby, someone to give you affirmations, whatever. I mean, slow steps. I mean, whatever. Get on the dating apps. Work on yourself. Get back to a point where you can walk for more than a minute without getting dizzy. I mean, that would, if I were that in that place, that would be my number one priority. Not who's going to call me baby when I put my head down at night. I mean, girl, come on. I mean, you're not going to be able to heal in this ev- environment, let alone thrive. You're talking about energy. You're sitting here telling us how you're about to fall asleep. So you're getting help and. You want to dunk on Chantel? And that's why I think Shannon and FFG's chemistry is so beautiful because they're so similar. FFG has to be the hero. That's why she has to always dunk on Chantel with something. Like when she did the thing with F- uh, BBJ, I stand on this. She did her big one. She did her big one with that one, especially with the way Chantel was running her mouth talking about FFG's dogs. And all. when I saw her pull that off, I said, Leave it to Chantel to have me applaud FFG. I was pissed. I was like, this was so good. She trolled the fuck out of you. Oh, my God. So just so we're clear, and you heard it here first. What happened with BBJ, rescuing BBJ? The BBJ rescue um, to FFG will be with um, the 89 LBs are to Amber. You will always hear about it for years to come. Always. That's never going to die. She did her big one. She had to make it public. And for those saying, oh, it was for the money. I think you guys forget. I've said this before. Multiple things can be right at once. She did her big one and definitely helped DBJ. Because at this point, I think almost anybody's better than Chantel. But yes, of course it was for the money. If it wasn't for the money, she would have. she wouldn't have made it public. Of course it was for the money. Are you kidding? The bitch held a whole, she shopped for BBJ's collar on stream. She shopped for a cat to get a Gucci collar for a cat. Of course it was for money. But I'm not going to take away the fact that like at least she got BBJ. But yes, it was for money. Yes, it was for content. Are you crazy? That is her 89 LBs, bitch. She is never letting that go. That will always be content in some way. Isms. So, uh, French Fried Girls should be worried because Chantal was threatening to sue again. Uh, shadowed that she might have returned to Canada to handle some other business, and she would handle that while she was there. Um, I would be terrified if I was French Fried Girl. So terrified. This is the woman who couldn't even make a vet appointment, and she's going to coordinate a multi-person lawsuit because she felt duped about her cat being given to somebody else by her to somebody else um but she couldn't tell you who because the selfish bitch wouldn't even walk down the stairs to go say bye she handed it to pete's again many reasons we can't follow through with our commitments so um and chantal doesn't have much tolerance for distress or discomfort if something isn't exactly the way she wants to eat it she's not going to eat it if it's not the right temperature she's not going to eat it um so you would think someone as large as her would be much more picky but, uh, or be much less picky. But actually, some of the more morbidly obese people I know are rather picky about their food. And, like other folks who deal with addiction, uh, can get pretty nasty if they don't get what they want. How many people think that they've probably fought about food a couple times already? I'm sure he was fine with her coming over, but she probably, she farted out a bunch of promises initially that she was going to, oh, I'm going to go to the gym and lose weight and it'll be great and I'll be going to the beach and we'll be travel-beezing. If you're too fat for a plane, you got to do something. 
because now you can't even get out of there in a hurry if you need to. Um, there's no shame in buying two plain seats if you need them, but if you don't like that you need them or that you're cutting it close to needing them, whose job is it to change the shape of Chantal's body? Yours? Mine? A pill? Some Ozempic? No, it comes down to Chantal and what she chooses to do. At this point, she's had more resources and opportunities and access to treatment over the years that most people don't give a shit how she feels or that she probably can't handle all of her ADLs maybe on her own because she was always such a nasty, self-centered person that her discomfort brings people pleasure. We've heard of schadenfreude. You know, it's the same sort of thing. I don't So we saw some boats pass by while we were hanging out by the riverside and decided after we were done hanging out by the river to see if we could find a dock and take a boat ride ourselves. On our way- It was his hard earned money to try to buy her food that would support her health. And then either she ordered it without him or he came to reason of, look, I don't love you so much that $250 isn't worth risking your health to me. So if you really love me, Chantal, really, really love me, you'll go on there, eat yourself half to death, and give me the cash. So, I don't know. So and she wants privacy. Okay. And uh, where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? He's out with the boys. Thailand, from what I understand, has a very, very active sex scene. So, um, I'm sure he'll text you. But at any rate, this week we're going to... But she's sitting there, not a lot of people around, but it was the old eyes darting. Remember the outhouse? Or going for Burger King and then sitting in the parking lot, full face of makeup, looking all over the place to see who's looking and who's watching. She's out proud and doesn't care, but hawks like she's ashamed of what she's engaging in. So when she's sitting there with Sala eating, and there's people, you know, not a lot of people, because they go everywhere when it's closed. She's afraid of people, and they want to be able to film, and they're weird. They're weird. She likes getting attention, but standing out doesn't really... Like, I think she probably feels like people are staring, because they are staring. It's a spectacle. She's four times the size of a normal woman. So I think people are going to stare. That's, that shouldn't be unexpected. Is it rude? Is it cruel? I don't know. Bottom line, it shouldn't be unexpected. And to act shocked would be kind of stupid as well. Please look better after yourself. Take better care of yourself. If not you, for your husband that you told us you loved so much, how much do you love him if you're willing to eat yourself to death? Because it's too difficult to try to get better. Beyond 36 hours. I'm not a 12-stepper, but the bondage of self. She's so obsessed with meeting her own wants and needs that she, to her inadvertently, steps on people and hurts people in that way. There's another side of Chantal that is a complete sociopath and pretty much doesn't care about feelings, doesn't know how to act. That's why we had the, the wedding cake and candles and she erupted like she was going to shit her pants because she doesn't know what happiness feels like so she doesn't demonstrate what it looks like. She doesn't know love. She doesn't know any of those feelings. And so with all this spinning in her head, her marriage on the line, her citizenship being up, she goes on a diet. One, I'm pretty, okay? That has a lot and I don't mean that to be conceited. I'm being very matter of fact. Being pretty gets you a lot of privilege. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you can get away with a lot if you're pretty. Number one, I'm pretty. It's because I've been watching this amazing trailer, okay, written by Sam H. Freeman and Nung Chung Ping, and they've done a British short film. They did it in 2021, and it was called Femme. So it became a success and they decided to invest more money and more time into making a longer version of this film 
called Femme. Now, the original version was 2021. It won a British um, Shaw Award um, from the um, British Independent Film Awards. And it became a huge hit. So they made a longer version of it. And I haven't seen the short film. And I'm trying to find the, t- the short film. But um, I've they've released the trailer for the new longer feature length version of Femme that they've done. So the how you why YouTube recommended this to me, I don't know. But they did, and I've been watching this trailer non-stop. So if copyright, if they'll allow me um, to put the trailer in, I will show you this trailer that I am seriously obsessed with. Sorry, guys, I forgot to add trigger warning, um, LGBTQ themes and homophobic violence. <laughs> well, you can turn around if you're a fucking man. You're letting them win. How you want to deal with that? I think you're a nice looking lad. On your front. I'm a nice guy. If you disrespect me, fuck you up. I get that. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same. Oh, yeah, man. You're a fucking big man. I best remember not to fuck with you then. So, this film features Nathan Stewart Jarrett from um, Candyman and Misfits and George Mackay. Now, I haven't seen George in anything, but he has been in um, 1917. After research, guys, he's been in 1917, um, When Hands Touch, Wolf and I Came By. I haven't seen any of those films, but I will watch uh, this George Mackay in Femme because this film looks awesome and it's a kind of a genre that hasn't been covered um, in an LGBTQ world. So this film looks amazing and I will be doing video after video after video of this film Femme when it finally comes out in December. So please stay tuned. Huggers, I just need to quickly add that concerning Femme, like Femme is released in Europe on December the 1st, right? It's it's released in some places earlier. So like in Spain and in um, Europe and places like that, it's released in December. Okay, and then... So I'll be watching it in December. For people that are in the States, um, it is rele- it, Fem is going to be released March the 22nd. I just wanted to put that in there. So there's a good few months. If you're in the States, there's a good few months before Fem is released in your cinemas. Hi, guys, and welcome to Tailored Talk. So... I'm going to talk about two things. One, I'm going to go over a tweet that um, I I need to talk about. And two, I'm going to um, go on to her diabetes um, video of when she went to the doctors. OK, a lot of people are poking holes through that on Twitter. So we're going to take a look at that. So this is a tweet that I really wanted to address and I wanted to address before I forgot it. So this is um, the original is from... Okay, the original is from um, Alia Sultana, and I'm assuming it's a woman. Um, Right, and they say, line exercise, healthy eating, isn't going to do it. She needs medical intervention in a clinic and not a YouTube hug club. I agree. It's cruel. This is the sentence that we're going to talk about. She says, it's cruel to put a 30-year-old man, Salah, through with dealing with a death bat, okay, it's cruel to put Salah through dealing with a death bat, and I agree with what she says, like, it's terrible for him to go through this, but 
we we but we can't forget that he's the one that basically lured her to Kuwait, said that he was rich. And I said, Salah deserves everything he gets. He literally told her he was rich to lure her there, milked her saggy udders for everything. I don't feel bad for that loser at all. And it's just like, she is, Aaliyah is right when she says that Salah does not deserve as a 30 year old or at any age to be put through dealing with a death fat and just dealing with somebody that is you're constantly having to be their carer around thailand he was constantly there to help her in and out of things um you know to walk with her to sit with her it's cruel to put him through that like i do get it but at the end of the day he knew what he was dealing with when he first got in touch with foodie he knew that she was overweight, he knew that she was obese, he knew that all she did was get high, get naked, and eat a lot of food, he knew all of that before he met her, he still invited her over to Kuwait, not only that, but he could have ghosted her at any time, when he realised that Canada wasn't an option, he could have ghosted her at any time, he chose not to do that, he chose to pick her up from the airport again, arrange to meet her, and pick her up from the airport, and take her home again, and again, and again, and again, he knew full well that she was a death fat, full well, every time he goes to the airport to pick her up, she's gained weight, like he knew full well that she's a death fat but at the same time he makes fun of her he hates her and he resents her for being a death fat so at the same time he's given her um, red velvet cake for the anniversary and it taking her to a restaurant um only to stuff her with more food for their anniversary so he he knows exactly what he's doing um you know i do feel bad for him because it, they, I mean, they, we know that they don't live together, but every day she must be calling him for something. Every day, every time they go out, she's tired. She needs the air conditioning. She needs to sit down. Her back hurts. She can't do a full shop by herself because her body's in agony and she has to run back to the car. So I get why, and nobody should have to deal with a death fat. But he jumped into the, into her fupa balls, knowing exactly what he was dealing with. So on some level, I feel sorry for him, and on some level, I don't. Um, let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Hi, guys. So before we start the video, one. Target Tornado, a.k.a. Glitter and Lasers. She's officially back. And it's a, a winter haul. It's a Walmart plus size winter dress haul from a holiday to comfy and now she's got her views have skyrocketed she's got 9.8 thousand views in eight hours so i might take a look at that because after the christmas video she got a lot of heat so she just posted shorts and now she's finally posted a full-length video so i think she's really just gonna forget about the target drama i don't think she's gonna address it as much money as she's missing out on i don't think she's gonna address the target thing anytime soon okay now foodie beauty is now up to 96k subscribers so i'm just praying to god that she doesn't get up to 100 because one will never hear the end of it two she'll get that 100k plaque and three for a long time 100k has been her goal and i'm just praying to god that it doesn't happen <laughs> that's terrible but to be quite honest with you i can't think of any youtuber that deserves 100k less than she does she doesn't deserve it okay if any you know if yeah who deserves it less she's a terrible candidate for 100k I just hope it doesn't get that high, but you never know. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the getting diagnosed in Kuwait video. Hope to hear from you. Bye.
Again, filler content, no need to film this. No need to film this at all. Just stock footage. Okay, now she's inside. Nothing from Salah. No. Hi guys, how are you? Oh, I didn't know you. the camera was there. No, I'm so proud of you, baby, for getting your blood work and getting healthy. Do you think that it may be Salah's family? One of Salah's sisters, maybe, that took her instead? I don't know. Drinking water so I can pee. But, like, how is she going to pee? Like, is, is there going to be, like, a bar? How is she going to stand? Okay. I mean, yes, she can pee sitting down. But how is, is her arm going to go under her stomach to get to her bits how like like ffg said like how was she peeing in that cup without help is this just you know i just feel like again this is like one big joke to her because she trolls her health so much but she's very good at trolling her health I'll give her that. She knows how to manipulate uh, people to worry about her health. This has got 17,000 views in two, two days. This is one of the best videos she's had this month. So I'll give it to her. She knows how to milk her health for views. I wonder how many filters she's using on her face right now. Or is that just like her real face i'm sure that's filters it always is but every time there's close-ups like this i do wonder like what does her face really look like like what does kuwait like have to see every day hi guys welcome back to another video so um this video is and like a lot of people say she did not show a way in that comes with a checkup like this to, you know that one twitter was saying that this isn't like this was probably like her second doctor's appointment not her first she's probably had to go to the doctors multiple times and number two no way in which says a lot because you're weighing at home but you won't weigh in on a legitimate doctor scale very interesting is going to be my experience at the uh, doctors um i said i was going to get checked out i wanted to have some blood work done to see what my what's it called is it hba is it a1c <laughs> um i'm gonna have my blood work results in this video for you coming soon so i'll tell you my experience um in detail what how it went uh, how much it cost here for healthcare, um, and then I'll show you my results. So um, we went pretty early in the day, and um, now you can choose private healthcare. There's so many private health. She looks really tired in this video, and her eyes are glistening. I don't know whether it's just she's just tight her eyes are watering because she's tired or her eyes are watering because she's just woken up or her eyes are watering because maybe she's been cooking or something or whether she's upset but some something's going on maybe she's just woken up and her eyes aren't but she's got she's got makeup on maybe she's maybe she slept in her makeup and she's just woken up maybe healthcare hospitals clinics here and she's a little she's not as upbeat as she, but then again it is a medical vlog so and there's also some hos there's i think like a couple hospitals or clinics that are just for kuwaiti people 
uh, the Kuwaiti population, and then there's uh, public sector. Um, we prefer, nothing against the public sector hospitals, but um, we prefer to go private and just pay the money. Like, but it's, uh, but it's quite a bit of money to go private, right? When you go private, you pay out of pocket. Like, I might look into, because the, the health insurance here covers the public sector. Like the healthcare you get here as an expat, but um, the the level of healthcare is just different in a private sector. And, and being from Canada, um, private healthcare is not something we really had access to. It was mostly public, so like hospitals and that. So um, yeah. So and let's be honest, privately they're supposed to treat you better. You know. So I went to a private clinic, and it ended up costing a total of 44 kd i think four okay so 207 canadian 152 us 44 47 i'll have to check and i'll put the conversion here somewhere for you guys so you know how much that is roughly okay is that for like one appointment or a couple of appointments like how many appointments does that include um, is that is that like a consultation and one appointment or a couple like not too bad you know for a blood test but but she's she's trying to sell to us that this is the first appointment that she's gone on so i can understand why she might not be saying anything um and i'll tell you what else i got so okay so um we arrived there maybe around 11 11 30 a.m and um I had been fasting and I don't believe her. I mean, but actually she was sleeping. So she she counts that as fasting. I see what you, I see what she means, okay. Um I guess like she woke up immediately woke up and went straight to the doctors. That's probably why she booked an early appointment so that she could sleep and then go straight to the doctors so she wouldn't have to focus on the fact that she's not eating. To the counter and I tell the lady, you know, what I what I need to, I've said I'm very, I'm kind of dizzy because I was and I've been testing my blood sugars and they've been really high. So she said, okay, well we have a um, doctor here who specializes in diabetes and things like that and it's the internal medicine doctor. So um, the consultation with the doctor cost seven KD. And then um, we went up to the level where the doctor was and we were seen pretty much almost immediately. There was not really any wait. At well, yeah, you're going private. So I wouldn't expect there to be a wait. This clinic, which is really awesome, which I find is the case with private clinics, the wait is a lot less. So. Of course, of, of course it's private you're paying out of pocket um the doctor was really nice really really nice and he had a nurse there and they took my blood pressure now this is something i find a little unbelievable because my blood pressure has never been this low as like you know they took they use a really big cuff and the doctor took my blood pressure and it was like 110 over 82. um i was like hey, what are you sure um so I almost felt like asking if he could take it. Maybe, maybe it's because she'd been, she hadn't eaten and was fasting. Again, because that's really strange. Now, maybe because I was fasting. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. But he said that's normal. So he said that's good. I know you're going to be like, yeah, right. That was my reaction too. But I mean, I, I believe, I, I don't know, because you lie so goddamn much. But I believe you on that one. But who am I to argue with the doctor, right? Um, so then he wanted, uh, you know, talked a bit about my med my background, my medical history, told him about my operations, about all this and that, like, you know. Did you tell them about the drug use, though? You know, the meth, the meth pipe off the floor, the, the coke, the crack, the weed. Did you tell them about everything? No, just really nice doctor, really not rushing, really um, seemed interested in talking to, you know, um... It's private, foodie. It's it's pri it's a private clinic. Me about my history. Another thing I find that doctors tend to do more in a in a private clinic. I don't know, but um, yeah. So 
Talk- and I think also, he also could be like fascinated by you. Like you are a huge woman that's not pregnant. You know, every all of the weight that you have put on is purely because of food. And I think there's a fascination because of there's a fascination of you because of that. Like, how do you get to that size? Even in an in an obese country like Kuwait, you're probably one of the biggest women there. And that is fascinating to a lot of people. Talk to him for a bit. Then he ordered um, some blood tests. So so I will insert the blood work here, the the um, the results, the test, and the re- that was requested and the results. I'm gonna blur out private information, obviously, but here you go. I have no idea what that means. No idea. No clue. Ca- I can't. I can actually barely see the words. No idea what this means. So if there are any doctors in the comments, any endocrinologists in the comments, no idea what this means, guys. No clue. M-A-L-B-92. No idea. Okay. Oh, click. Oh. There we go. Diagnosing diabetes according to the American Diabetes Association. Okay. So... But wouldn't Kuwait have its own association? Or do they do everything according to the American standards? Who knows? So diagnosing diabetes according to American Diabetes Association. uh, Right, normal. That is a 10.4. So she's diabetic. (laughs) Her result was was 10.4. And normal would be less than 5.9. 6.5 6.5 or higher is diabetic and she's 10.4 uncontrolled diabetic accent suggested uh, above eight so yeah she needs help like people have like her beezers and everybody have been saying um i also had to do a urine sample like you know like pee in the little cup thing how did you do that really I think she had a nurse's help. Um, And then we had to wait about an hour and the results were in just shy of an hour. So we took them back to the doctor after going to the lab. It was all in the same clinic, which is nice. And was who was we? She hasn't mentioned Salah's name once. She hasn't mentioned her loving, adoring, handsomest husband. She hasn't mentioned him once. Who did she go with? Took them back to the la- uh, to the doctor, who saw us right away, looked at the results. Um, and actually, I forgot to mention, when I was doing the blood work, um, they picked my finger to take a blood test. It was 23 point something. It's uh, on the results. It was like 23, okay? So that's really high. 23 MMOL. And... Um, I have no idea what that means. So I'll try to convert that into MGDL for you. But uh, the test results came back and there was a couple of problems. You know, pancreas, liver, everything he said was fine. Um, but the... I, d- I don't believe that her liver is fine. Didn't she say that she had fatty liver years ago? I don't believe her liver's fine. Yeah. A1C was not in that body, no way. 10, so I think 10.1, so that's pretty high. I have to get that down. So um, they did diagnose me with diabetes, like officially. Obviously. Even though I knew because my blood sugar levels were... Everybody knew that years ago, but anyway. So high. Um, and then there's this thing here. It's like MALB, M-A-L-B. Which is something in the urine, apparently. The normal range is like 0 to 20. But mine was like 92. And what's that for? So this, he said, had to do with um, something being in the urine that has to do with eating way too much salt. So salt and certain foods. So um, immediately after that, he told me to eliminate certain foods and you guys are going to be keto people are going to be keto lovers are not going to want to she seems really tired in this one i wonder 
you know, if they've just, maybe it's because they've just got back and she's tired of walking a, a bit of walking and having to wait at the doctors, maybe anxiety, but she seems really tired. I believe this, but a bit, a bit sluggish. This doctor told me to not eat any eggs, red meat, cut that out. Um, what, what about fast food? <laughs> eat mostly fish, chicken, and vegetarian, like, you know, uh, mostly vegetables like what about the rice <laughs> this much like this much he showed me with the hands like this much vegetables on your yeah but foodie your hands are a lot bigger and a lot thicker than not than like regular people's hands wait so this much for your palm so you do your this thing with your palm it shows you how much rice you can eat so this plus a half of this um yeah she's not gonna listen to the rice portion mm -hmm. So yeah, I can eat that much rice, which I know you guys are going to be like, what? It raises your glycemic index. I guess mixing it with the the vegetables, which have a lot of fiber, kind of slow down the spike of sugar. I don't know. Yeah, but foodie, I can't see you eating like a palm full of rice and veg. I can't. But what can I say? I went to a doctor and this is what he told me. I wish that you'd taken your usual, like, a picture of your usual food portion and, like, showed him, like, this is how much rice I eat in a day. Because he would have been horrified. Um, chicken, fish. He wants me to eat fish three times a week. Um, some chicken and vegetarian meals, like maybe beans, stuff like that. Because <clears throat> he doesn't believe in, like, something. He likes, like, lower fat food. So, like, um... Basically, I have to eat very bland, he said, because like the salt level and things, I have to be very, very careful because this that's not going to happen and lead to my kidney. My kidneys were fine now, but this in your this in your urine can lead to kidney problems down the line from eating way too much sodium. Plus being diabetic. And yeah, I mean, I think you've already got kidney and liver problems. I mean, I are you sure they did a full check? definitely damage your kidneys so because you're you're trying to tell me that your liver and your kidneys are fine the way that you eat all this all the sugar and all the sugary stuff that you drink that your bladder and your kidneys and your genitourinary system you're trying to tell me that that's okay um so basically he just uh yeah, I said, okay, what about, like, because I asked him at first, like, what, how should I be eating, you know, for this? Because, um, should I be eating keto, like, very low carb? And he said, no, like, like, really right away, like, no, don't do keto. It's very unhealthy. And, um, I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah, he's like, you can eat carbs, but limit them and make them, like, healthy carbs, you know, like, a whole grain you can have one slice of whole grain toast a day kind of thing yeah and just lay off the rice but how are you gonna do that when you're used to having like a pig trough of rice like how are you supposed to do that when you eat enough rice for two adults um uh, for every meal she loves her rice i can't see her eating a normal portion of rice i can't um like something really good for breakfast would be whole grain toast with some beans or something. But uh, fruit, I can have very, like a, a limited amount. Um, maybe like one pear, half of a, you know, whatever, an apple, but like wait a couple of days for my blood sugars to regulate. Um, so because he's put me on medication, I'll get to that in a minute. So that's basically what happened, you know. Um, it was a pretty decent experience. Like, you know, I felt well taken care of. I mean, it's not going to be great, foodie. I mean, you're going to the doctors. The doctors is never great because you're always going there because something is going to happen or something bad has happened or you just don't feel right. So going to the doctors is never going to be that much of a positive experience but i'm glad that the staff had respect for you and treated you well i mean that's what i would expect in a private clinic it was affordable in my opinion i mean well everything's really affordable to you except for thailand kind of you know yeah kind of no and um 
yeah, that's about it, I guess. So, I really have to really, 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 really do this. But how many years have you been saying that, though? Um, oh, after my blood test and everything, he ordered a shot of insulin to try to bring the sugar down. And I went down to the nursing station and they picked my arm with an injection of insulin. I don't know how much, but I don't know. I don't think it worked because I took my blood in the evening. And the, I, I mean, I was like fasting for a few hours because I ate, I had some chicken and a few vegetables for, for lunch at around 1.30. So um, that's my lunch with some a little bit of hummus, homemade hummus. I find it weird that we're 12 minutes in of a 18 minute video. She hasn't mentioned Salah once by name or her husband by her calling her, her hus calling him is her husband she hasn't mentioned him once what was his reaction to everything what was his reaction to the MALLB what was the reaction to your new diet what was the and what was the reaction to the official di um, diabetes diagnosis like what was Sella's reaction to everything I just think it's weird for somebody that constantly mentioned Salah that she hasn't mentioned him. It's almost like she wasn't with him. And I didn't eat again. I didn't eat anything. Uh, and because he was like, I want you to be on like a regimen. I'm kind of all over the place. I'm like remembering tidbits of information and I'm really tired because it's late. Oh, what? Yeah, she looks absolutely knackered. But he's like, I want you to all glossy eyed and strange to um, eat between seven and nine a.m. for breakfast. Never skip breakfast noon to, you know, around 12 to one for lunch. And I mean, he's going to have to discuss her snacking because she constantly grazes, a.k.a. snacks throughout the day. And it's like somebody like foodie eats all throughout the day snacks in between breakfast lunch and dinner you know she's not gonna suddenly just have breakfast at you know nine then um one o'clock lunch then five o'clock dinner and that's gonna be that she's gonna be eating all throughout the day so what were the doctor's tips concerning snacks and snacking then dinner um no later than 8 p.m like finish every all your eating by even eight is kind of late for you by 8 p.m or so and then don't eat again till the next day that's never gonna happen look at her face that's there's no way that she's gonna stop eating and go cold turkey from 8 p.m until the next day no way so um after my lunch i just didn't i, I slept for a while and didn't feel like you know cooking anything and now it's like kind of too late so I, I have to wait till the morning so my blood sugar when i tested it not long ago like maybe an hour ago and it's like maybe 11 at night it was 239 like the same now insulin takes a while to to work right i mean it's not just one injection i don't know so maybe what i had for dinner i don't know for lunch i'm not sure but well we know that you're eating bullshit and takeaway all throughout the day that's why um maybe my pancreas is just damaged and i'm eventually gonna need to be on insulin i don't know i hope not but um well wouldn't they wouldn't they have told you that i have to go back on monday for a follow-up and i have to record my blood sugars before i go you know, he put me on, I can't, my medication's in the other room, but he put me on like something. Wouldn't, wouldn't you bring your medication in if you know that you're doing a doctor's video? Wouldn't you purposely bring your medication in so that you can show us? I think that's like, sort of like metformin, but it's not. It's like a mix of diabetic drugs. It's tablets. And he put me on some kind of other pill that's gonna like it's like a blood pressure pill but it's like he said it's sort of just like a just in case kind of thing for the it's supposed to like help with the sodium level in my urine i don't know how but 
anyway <laughs> so that's that that's pretty much I'm just trying to think if I'm forgetting anything I don't think so pretty much my visit from start to finish I mean you can you can quit the video now it's it's past the eight minute mark so you'll get your ads in the private clinic here um usually when I would go for healthcare, I've been a couple times to the public sector clinic and then I went to a private clinic and then we liked that a lot more you you're just in and out you know like you're, you're just I don't know the level of care is just different so so now we we were we chose to well go, yes it's private go to another private clinic and um yeah that's about it so um I don't know if you have any questions I can try to answer in the in the the comments um but that's my experience with the healthcare in Kuwait and this is definitely was not fun I mean I can't tell you how many times of, of course not of course not you're very 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 overweight you'll see you're having to go out you hate going out you're having to speak to a doctor you hate speaking to a doctor and getting facts so of course you hated it of course you did times i got asked if i was pregnant there <laughs> oh, let's rewind was not fun i mean i can't tell you how many times i got asked if i was pregnant there <laughs> well foodie can you blame them? Can you blame them? You look 45, 50 and you're, and you know, you're the size of, of the, one of the elephants in the Thailand, in the Thailand um, sanctuary that you went to. Like, c can you blame them? Can you blame them? You're absolutely huge. You're a bowling ball on legs. Like, of course, your, your food pair is down to the knees. Like, of course, they're going to bring up pregnancy. Like, why do you have a body like that? Of course they're going to ask if you're pregnant or you've been pregnant regularly. Like, they're going to ask. Like, you can't be shocked. You can't be. <laughs> and I was just like, I don't, I understand that because, like, women my age and typically with a large belly, they probably... And you do look older than your years. You are 39, but you look 45, 50, in between 45, 50, you know, you don't look your age. You look a lot older than you, than your actual age. So people are just going to assume that you, you've had kids or you're having kids later in life. Like probably are mostly, most of the time pregnant here, but, um, prob they're probably not. They just want to know why your stomach is so huge. Whatever, I didn't take offense to that. Why you're a walking hot air balloon. Like, regular women in Kuwait do not look like that. People don't see women like you in Kuwait every day. You're not the norm over there. You know, and... You honestly can't be shocked at that question. Honestly, while visiting the doctors. They were really nice. <laughs> why, does she, why does she look so depressed? They were really nice. Sad eyes. And, uh, but it's not fun being in another country and... Well, whose fault is that? You could always go back to Canada any day of the week. I'm supposed to be, like, living up my life. Right, and this is the, this is the foodie beauty living it up era. You're just sitting on the, uh, you're just sitting, um, on the floor, stuffing yourself with takeout, rubbing your face in Julia's fur, getting ringworm and then you know splashing the cash that you don't have um out on Salah and his car I mean what life is that you know because I'm not getting any younger and y you can say that again sweetheart when I get too old um, you know you you're already your body is already too old you've put years on your life be able to do any of these things so I want to do things now like what so I have to focus on my health journey. Sure. And it has to happen, so. You say this every year. Inshallah. Um, I'll be able to pull through. I believe you. I feel, I think if I ate something really bad for me, I would feel so guilty and 
scared of what is yeah but that guilt doesn't stop you from binging same with Anne Boleyn it doesn't stop the binge monster through into my body now that I've seen the doctor because you know of the the salt and the beer and thing and yeah the fact that you're pissing salt in the toilet every day you mean more organ damage and my blood sugar like they were like alarmed at my blood sugar level he's like that's your blood sugar with fasting and that was like the 230 something and then i think of like the sub i ate with all the salty processed meat on it oh my gosh well and your diet for the last 30 years yeah i don't know what i was doing but you're doing what you always do binge anyway that's about it so that's my diagnosis that's my experience and i appreciate you guys listening to me and my on my journey um i don't want to hear people like berating the doctor i saw because well yeah everybody should leave the doctor alone obviously he's a doctor you know most people online are not <laughs> and i know they're gonna get a, he's gonna get a lot of back backlash for telling me not to do keto because people who are like you know like well i lost this much weight and i've never felt healthier blah blah, blah. i don't know i'm gonna follow what this doctor says and well just follow what your doctor says don't listen to anybody else that's it so anyways guys i'll see you in the next one bye guys okay guys and um, that's the end of her vid do you think she's hiding things i think she is i do think that this isn't her first appointment like twitter says i think that she's been going to the doctors a few times now uh, because it doesn't look good and she's picking one appointment that was okay to get her diabetes addressed her diabetes may be may have been addressed months ago we'll never know she lies so much do you think that foodie has it in her to do a weight loss journey with Salah and a doctor by her side and number three where the hell was Salah I don't think he was with her I think she went with somebody else maybe a friend of Salah's maybe a couple that were a friend of a friend of Salah's maybe one of Salah's sisters took her there somebody took her but it wasn't Salah I don't believe it was Salah for one second he loves to get on camera. He loves to talk on camera. He loves to do a voiceover. He loves to eye fuck himself on camera because he's obviously the most beautiful man in Kuwait. So obviously he wasn't there. So if he wasn't there, then who really was? Let me know what you think in the comments. That's the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching as always. Thank you for the new subs. Uh, uh, over 500 now. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for the comments. Uh, I always read the comments. Thank you for the engagement. It's really cool. So um, thank you for watching, guys. And thank you for listening. Take care.